All right, we'll do one more chapter from Boxcar Children tonight. And this is chapter number nine. It's called Fun in the Cherry Orchard. So the last chapter, you remember, they built a pool and Benny found some eggs and they ate them for dinner. And now we'll see what happens. Fun in the Cherry Orchard. The next morning, Henry thought and thought about taking the other children to pick cherries with him. At last, he told his sisters about it as they ate bread and milk for breakfast. Dr. Moore said he wanted more children to help. Do you think all of us ought to go, Jesse? Well, said Jesse, I don't know. You see, there are four of us, and if Grandfather is looking for us, it would be easier to see four than one. Yes, that's so, answered Henry. But we can go down the hill and through the streets two by two, and I'll take Benny and go ahead, and in a little while, you and Violet can come with the dog. Good, said Jesse. Watch can tell you where to go. Oh, watch can tell where you go. Get it, because he's a dog and he can sniff it. So good, said Jesse. Watch can tell where you go. The children took down the clothesline and shut the door of the car. Everything was in order and they started out. When they arrived at the orchard, they soon saw they were not the only workers. The doctor was there and the cook and two men carrying ladders and baskets. Good morning, Henry, said Mrs. Moore. Can you work today? Oh, yes, said Henry. And these are my sisters, Jessie and Violet, and they can pick cherries too. Benny is too young to climb trees, but we had to bring him. Then maybe he can carry baskets, said Dr. Moore, smiling at Benny. You see, this is a big cherry year, and we have to work fast once we begin. Maybe he can help fill the little baskets from the big ones. Eat all you want, said Mrs. Moore. The cherries are beautiful this year. The children didn't eat all they wanted, but every now and then a big red cherry went in someone's mouth. Henry and the girls went up on ladders and began to pick cherries. Watch barked for a while. He did not like to have Jessie climbing a ladder. But then he sat down and looked up at her in the tree. Benny hurried here and there, carrying baskets to the pickers, eating all the cherries he wanted. Everyone in the orchard liked Benny. The doctor laughed delightedly at him, and sweet Mrs. Moore fell in love with him at once. By and by, he sat down beside her and carefully filled small baskets with cherries from the big baskets. The men laughed at the funny things Benny said and watched barked happily. By and by, the doctor left the orchard to make some calls. At last, Mrs. Moore said, I've never had such happy cherry pickers here. You are having such a good time out here that I don't want to go in the house. She smiled. Mary the cook seemed to think the same thing because she came again and again into the orchard. After a while, the cook went in to get dinner, but the children still picked cherries. At noon, Dr. Moore came home. You must stay for dinner, he said to the children. We can eat here in the orchard under the trees. Will your mother be watching for you? And when he asked this, he looked at Henry in a queer way. Henry did not know what to say, but at last Jesse said, No, our mother and father are dead. Then you must stay, said Mrs. Moore. Here comes Mary. And the cook put the table under the trees, and they all sat around it and ate a delicious dinner. And when Mary went into the house and came out again, she had big bowls of cherry dumplings. I can smell something good, cried Benny. Is it cherries? Yes, my little dear, said Mary. Cherry dumplings. The cherries were cooked in the dumplings. Benny ate his cherry dumpling and then went to sleep with the dog for a pillow. But Henry and Jesse and Violet began to work again. Mrs. Moore looked out the window at them. Just see how those children work, she said to Dr. Moore. They are so polite. I wonder who they are. Dr. Moore said nothing. But after a while, he went out into the orchard. You have worked long enough, he said, and he gave them four dollars and all the cherries they could carry. That is too much, said Henry. No, said Dr. Moore. It is just right. You see, you are better than most workers because you are so happy. Come again. I'll come every day, said Benny, and they all laughed. Dr. Moore saw that the children did not leave the orchard at the same time, but they started down the street two by two. I wish I knew who they are, he said to himself. When the cherry pickers got back to their little home, they looked everything over carefully, but things were just as they had left him. Them, 
The door was still closed and the milk and butter were in the refrigerator. The children made a happy supper of bread and butter and cherries and then went to bed in the boxcar. That same night, Dr. Moore sat reading the paper and all at once he saw the word lost and began to read. Lost, four children, two boys and two girls, somewhere around Greenfield or Silver City, $5,000 to anyone who can find them, James Henry Alden. Dr. Moore sat up. $5,000, he said. James Henry Alden, oh my, oh my. And he sat still for a long time, thinking and laughing to himself. Four children living in a boxcar, but I shall not tell Mr. Alden that they are his grandchildren he said. So he somehow knew that they were living in a boxcar. That's the end of that chapter. And we are as close to the end of the book. So we're almost done with this one too. We're speeding through these books. So yes. All right. I love you very much. I hope you're enjoying the story. Bye.